I'm EMT Regis, emergency medical technician attached to the Cashries Fire Service. Um, today, I'll briefly touch note on the situation which is at hand, which is the COVID-19 situation, which is a very serious situation. I think the general public has a misconception of I have been a victim of COVID-19 and it has been a really, really tough challenge for me when I actually had the virus. I had difficulty breathing, I was hospitalized and I have absolutely no underlying issues. Um, my sister, who recently passed away, fell victim to the virus. The virus is as serious as the doctors say it is. We have found ourselves in situations where our resources are exhausted, the men are exhausted, the hospitals are exhausted. I have personally seen at the hospitals doctors where it's very difficult for them and the nurses, where the doctors are basically answering the phones, they need to cater for the patients, they need to document the reports, and it's just as hard. On a daily basis, we receive a lot of calls. Initially, maybe we'll have received more um, frontline calls, but now you more you get more COVID calls, where you find people have a lot of different symptoms, such as shortness of breath, um, um, abdominal pain, um, fever, coughing, diarrhea, vomiting, and it's just a lot. And you will find that the person saturation level, the oxygen saturation level is very low. Um, when we get to the patient, sometimes it's very critical. And when the hospital is exhausted and the hospital is overworked and there are a lot of patients, what will happen is really and truly people will die because they will not be able to receive the adequate treatment that they need. The doctors may, they lack in resources, they lack in manpower. And also at the fire service, we're really lacking manpower and we're lacking resources and it's very difficult for us. So I think people need to really take COVID-19 very seriously. Like I said, I lost my sister and I could have lost my life through COVID-19. I recall uh, that evening very clearly. Um, my sister is not one to ever ask me to go to the hospital. And she came to me and she told me, Jay, she really cannot breathe. She said to me that she cannot breathe. I did my vitals on her and I realized she's critical, she's really bad. So I brought her to the hospital. The doctors at the OKU hospital treated her. And um, the doctor told me that she has a mild pneumonia. Within three days, she will be um, treated with via antibiotics and then to be sent over to the Victoria Hospital. When she went over to the resp respiratory clinic, the next day I had work. Um, she told me that um, she's doing okay. The doctor said that she's fine, her lungs are clear. Um, hopefully, if she's been treated, she will be sent home for home quarantine. So, I was really excited, really happy that knowing that she's there. Um, when I spoke to my sister the day after, I realized that she's not in the best condition that the way I saw her from the time I brought her in the hospital. And from there on, my sister has been deteriorating. And it is really sad, especially on her last hour um, when the doctors called me. And just before that, we spoke over video call and the doctors told me to prepare myself because she's not doing too well. And then she's been intubated. At that point, I knew I lost my sister and this is when things really, 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 really took a toll on me, especially when going back to work and seeing on a, every time I go, especially to the respiratory clinic, seeing dead bodies being Seen dead bodies being put away in the vans to leave to go to the funeral home. And 
it's just sad. It takes a toll on frontline workers. It takes a toll on me personally because I have lost my sister and also people have lost their family, their loved ones. And like I said, it really hit home and now I have to bury my sister. Now I have to really bury my sister. So I think we need to do what is right, follow the protocols, protect yourself and your family. I'm not saying people cannot have a good time, but we need to protect ourselves. Do whatever it takes to protect ourselves. And I'm telling you, it's a lot from the fire service point of view. And I'm only speaking for my crew. There are two other crews and they are also exhausted through the entire COVID-19 pandemic situation. It's very, very, very hard. The hospitals are overwhelmed. They're overflowing with sick people. People are crying and calling all the time. Family members are crying all the time for patients who have difficulty breathing. And sometimes when we get there, it's just, it's too late. So please take the right step. It's just sad, really, really sad. Situations where I would go to a patient responding on the frontline ambulance. <coughs> Um, maybe just basic sideline symptoms and <clears throat> when we get there um, it's just as severe um, when I get home maybe on my, my, my 48 hours of rest I will watch my television and see those very same people that I went for is on telebitaries and maybe when I get to the hospital I find out about what happened and realizing that they were transferred maybe to a respiratory clinic and they did not make it.